Oh yes, in this video I'm going to talk about the optimal speed with uh, to pulling a trailer with Model X. Yeah, for now it's only Model X. Uh, so you know, many people they want to know uh, how fast should I drive when I pull my caravan or my whatever trailer, you know, uh, to arrive faster. Because if you drive faster, you will consume more energy. But if you drive slower, you will arrive slower. So, and also like how often should I stop? Should I skip some superchargers and charge longer? Or should I, you know, visit all the superchargers on the way there? And also the last question is like, what about um, charging must stop? Given that, okay, we have a distance here, uh, there is no supercharger between, but there's a charging mode. Should I stop at the charging mode or should I just charge longer on the supercharger, you know? So I will try to give you guys some of these answers. Uh, I did some tests uh, a couple of days ago where I measured the consumption at various speed. But you see, uh, I drove at 70, 80, and 90 kilometers per hour, and um, 90 is already very legal, you know, and 100 kilometers per hour. But some countries they will allow that. Uh, I think in Germany, if you have the right sticker and stuff. Uh, but in at least in Norway, you're not, I mean, legally, if you tow something with a trailer, you, are, you can only drive at 80 kilometers per hour. But everyone and the mother, like, you know, the trucks and uh, semis, they cruise at 88. So that's why I also include the 90 kilometers per hour speed because, you know, you don't want those truck in your back fender or, or, you know, well, behind you too close. Yeah. So um, uh, let's dig into the first case, right? First scenario. Um, now, um, my my car is a restricted car. I will come back to that, but I, mean, I have some videos where I explain, you know, the, if you supercharge too much, you will be restricted in the speed. So, but that's why I also use this general, I look at um, look at my charging session where I recorded before when it was not restricted. Yeah, so I calculate all these results based on, uh, you know, that. Uh, and if we assume that we arrive with 10% and we charge to 70%, which is like the best um, charging speed, uh, that's when you should leave. If you stay longer, you know, it will start, kind of drop. But again, all this, like I'll show you now, it all depends. Like every situation you know, depends, but you can just maybe make a general rule like I do. Uh, like I have my speed, I usually cruise at 90 km per hour if I can, and then it works for most cases. Uh, but you know, I also want to find out is it smart to cruise at 90 or not? It depends. Uh, and you see here uh, the parameters here that uh, the detour time has been set to eight minutes. Now, in the earlier video, when I tested you know the car without trailer, I set it to five minutes. But in this case, I added slightly more time because uh, some places they are not trailer friendly, so you have to unhitch and hitch the trailer, and that actually takes some. It steals some time. And this actually means that if you can choose, you should avoid the you know, non-friendly, like non-trailer friendly stalls or superchargers and go for the, the trailer friendly superchargers because uh, you actually waste some time and over a long day, you know, it adds up. Um, and okay, it's a little bit confusing maybe the table that um, you see that this, we have this distance of 198.3 kilometers. Uh, to calculate all this detour and charging time and whatever, I base it on that number, you know, that distance. Like, um, let's say if I drive at 90 kilometers per hour, you see that um, uh, I only have 148 kilometers of range if I charge it 70%. And then based on that, I have to take, uh, you know, one and uh, 1.34, which is the, the factor there, you know, 1.34 uh, charging stops, right? Yeah, so we, we have to like calculate all this because uh, it would be really hard and time consuming to try to test every case for reals. Yeah, but uh, anyway, what you want to see uh, the uh, like is the, those um, two rightmost columns here. You see the kilometers per hour, and you see that if you drive at 70 kilometers per hour, your average speed will be pretty low. Uh, if you incre increase it to 80, it's much much better. And then 90, it's even better. And then Again, 100 is even better, but it's like the gain is not that big uh, and you will also consume more energy and you will use more cycles. So I would probably cruise at 90, even if I could cruise at 100 uh, in places, you know, there where it was legal, I would still probably cruise at 90. And then what about the next case here? Um, now, in the previous one, you know, we counted in the, um, the charging stops, but in this case, uh, we omit the charging stop. We have a, a scenario where I'm charging, supercharging at one 
place and um, the next supercharger is 170 kilometers away there is no other supercharger in between so what should we do should we charge just enough and then drive slower or you know charge longer and drive faster so we see here that uh, the state of charge column here uh, if you charge to only 61 percent which which is pretty fast you get like maximum speed you know and then leave uh, you actually arrive slower because you have to drive so slow. So if you charge to um, 70% and then to drive at 80 kilometers per hour, you'll drive much faster. Your average speed is much higher. And then it goes like this, but you see that um, um, the, the, the sweet spot is 90 kilometers per hour. If you cruise 100 kilometers per hour, you have so high consumption that you have to push the charging session to 91%, which is really slow. So in this case, 90 kilometers per hour is the best deal. Uh, if you look at the next next case here, now in the previous case, I was testing this in summer weather, dry, you know, high temperature, which means less air density. What about winter or rain or, you know, if you, if you have a larger trailer or caravan, then it would be slightly different <clears throat> because, you know, higher consumption means that you have to char charge longer. So you see in this table here, uh, the numbers are higher, right? Um, but still, uh, driving at 70 kilometers per hour does not pay off, so you should at least drive 80 kilometers per hour. But you see, if you drive at 90 kilometers per hour, the average speed is slightly lower. So, of course, I don't have enough data here, but um, it could be that 85 kilometers per hour is the, the sweet spot here. I'm not sure, uh, because, well, but it depends. Um, I mean, uh, for some people, um you might still want to charge longer let's say you charge to 90 like 93 percent or whatever and then cruise at 90. Right? it depends you know like if you have to drive on stretches where um cars behind you can't overtake you then it's not cool to kind of block that lane uh, and cruise at 80 where everyone else wants to drive at uh, 90 or whatever faster yeah but at least for me, I mean, this was a little bit eye-opener, so maybe like, oh, you know what, uh, maybe in winter, I know in winter I can have somewhat high consumption, so um, on those stretches, let's say from uh, from Elverum to Alvdal, uh, that's 165 kilometers in winter and also elevation change, uphill, so I might actually, if I'm in, in a rush, I might have actually cruise at like 85 kilometers per hour, yeah. Um, and then in the next case here, we have, um, uh, you know, that was like a long distance, right? But let's look in the scenario when the distance is shorter, only 135 kilometers. And again, I use this one as an example from, from Gul to Ulan, which is much shorter distance. Uh, so that totally changes everything because now we still have, you know, we assume the winter consumption or the, the like large trailer or caravan consumption, right? Still high consumption, but because the distance is lower, shorter, then it pays off to drive faster. Uh, it seems like um, uh, yeah, 90 again is the best speed for Norway. I guess uh, again, 100. You see that uh, you, know, you can even drive 100 and still arrive slightly faster. Yeah. And then uh, in the next case, here we look at uh, what about uh, restricted batteries like mine. Uh, this also applies to uh, 75 pack because you know mine is a 90 pack. But when I look at you know my charging speed uh, and also how many kilowatt hours I add to 70 percent uh, as uh, so mine is a 90 pack right a 75 pack which is not restricted has like similar properties so uh, this could also apply to a 75 pack because I can't list all the scenarios for you you have to kind of like figure it out also but you see, um, now we go back to the case where we have 170 kilometers uh, distance, long distance and restricted. Uh, but still, in my case, uh, if this is the summer consumption, lower consumption or small trailer, whatever, then it pays off to drive faster, at least up until 90 kilometers per hour. But could, because my charging session, my charging is slightly slower Then for me, it it's slower if I try to push it, you know, drive 100 kilometers per hour if I'm in a rush. <laughs> you will just stress and you will arrive slower you know if you drive faster yeah so um and then let's look at the other case here uh if this was winter for my my restricted battery same you know the same uh, distance 170 then it's actually better for me to um to drive at 80 kilometers per hour um because um yeah the higher you go the slower it charges 
And then, uh, by the way, a little side note here. You see that um, the state of charge for 100 kilometers per hour is 107%. Um, you can achieve that by channel mode charging. So, um, you see that the average speed on uh, the 90 and 100 is equal here because it's actually, I calculated that um, in the in the 100 uh, case, I stopped charging at around 85% and then you charge the rest on channel mode. I'll give you a case on that one also so you can figure out, you know. But again, so um, if you have a big caravan or if you have high consumption, then you should consider driving slower, not cruise at 90, but maybe 85, 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, and okay, um, let's look at the case now with the channel mode stop because um, uh, the thing is that uh, if you push the car beyond uh, uh, I mean to like 90% or whatever, you know, towards the end uh, the charging at supercharger will be slower than charging on channel mode. So the, uh, the whole idea is that if you know that you have to, I mean if you know you're going to drive a long stretch where you have to fill it up with channel mode, then you might as well, you know, stop uh, the supercharging and then top up on the channel mode on the way there. Uh, but there's also the case where uh, you could push it, let's say in this case, you know, to 93%. I mean, in the case where you have to charge it to like 100 or 105%, then you have no chance to only charge on the supercharger. Um, well, actually, there's a, there is also an option I didn't mention, I didn't calculate, which is to drive slower, you know. But let's assume you want to cruise at 90, because we see that 90 kilometers per hour seems to be a good deal in most cases. Well, uh, what about the case where you charge to 93% versus the case when you charge to only 80% and then you have to charge a rest. Well, if you have to charge a rest on Chalamo, you have to add another 10.4 kilowatt hours to achieve that 93%. And uh, that will take um, 15 minutes. So, um, uh, well, the, the charging takes 15 minutes. And then we assume actually, in, we're a bit optimistic here, we assume 14 min uh, 4 minutes detour only. Um, because you will want to pick you know the the shortest detour yeah if you can pick of course um so um uh, that means that you know uh, on the on the um, on the chalamo session if you try to you know, top up as early as possible this is also another thing you have to top up as early as possible if you are top up too late then the voltage will be lower and then you get slower charging speed this is the nature of chalamo um but uh, during the charging session, you will have 45 kilowatt. We assume 45 kilowatt um, charging speed. But uh, because we have to count in the detour, plugging in, plugging out, show the RFID, you know, the the average speed for the whole charging session is actually only 37 kilowatt. So that means, you know, uh, in some cases it might be better for you to just sit and wait at the supercharger. But let's see in this case, right? Um, on the, on the supercharger, to charge from 80 to 93%, you will only have 29 kilowatt average power versus 37 uh, if you stop on the Chalamo. And what does this mean in time? Well, it means that you will save three and a half minutes yeah, by using a Chalamo stop. But it's a little bit more cumbersome, of course. Uh, and also, well, uh, it will cost 35 nook, which is like four euros, yeah. Uh, so basically you save a little bit of uh, time, three and a half minutes, and it costs a little bit. So, you know, uh, in my opinion, it's probably not worth it. Um, it you should like, I mean, I, I think like we can based on this, make like a rule, like the general rule of thumb that, um, I mean, if you have to top up only, you know, like less than 15 minutes, then it's not worth it. If you have to top up like half an hour on Chanamo, then it's probably worth it. Yeah. So um, that was it, um, you know, I could <laughs> give you guys more scenarios, but I think based on this, you can try to figure out, you know, what is the scenario for you and, you know, yeah, what, what is the best speed or what's the best charging, uh, like how, how far should you charge? Because it all depends on your trailer or everything, you know, your car or whatever. But um, this was at least interesting for me because uh, it means that um, in winter or in a high consumption, I might drop my speed a little bit just to arrive faster. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was useful for you. So, um, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later.